Welcome ladies and gentlemen, today I'd like to show you how to create your own Angular JS app with a RESTful backend. First of all, we create a new Maven project, a web application, and choose a name. So now I copy two GPA entity classes in it. And here you see the fields and the named queries that are created automatically when you create the GPA from a database. Now we end the RESTful web servers from entity classes. And we need a new data source. and finish. So now we have the created facades with the CRUD services and we change the URL to a smaller one and here we do the same. And in the application config uh, you see the start of the path and we change that too. So now we go under the project properties and the run and we take the embedded webkit browser and the start URL with amps. So that's where the application starts when we press run. So now we need a cross origin resource sharing filter choose a package and now we already finished the backend without a single line coded by ourselves and now we can start the project and it will take some time until the glassfish server starts And now you see in the embedded WebKit browser the data of AMPs. In XML format. And at the top you see the, the URL out of which you get to the backend. And we'll create a new HTML5 project for our AngularJS frontend. And we'll download an online template, the AngularJS seed. And if we now run the project in the embedded WebKit browser, we see that uh, it kind of looks strange, nothing's happening if you press the links. And if you see the output, everything's red, it's full of exceptions. Here you see it said fail to reload resource and can't find variable. So you have to go to the terminal in your project. And here you see a power.json. And now you simply have to say power install. 
and that will now load all the Angular JS packages you need. And for our project, we need the Angular resource too, and you have to download that manually because it's not included in the default packages. And now we see there is a folder Bower components with the Angular scripts. And now we'll add the Angular resource JS. Just drag and drop it to the other scripts. And if you now save the project, it automatically refreshes the WebKit browser. And now you see the text is printed correctly. Oh, we don't need the text there. And everything that you write in the index HTML will be printed on all partial views. So I'll write presented by Lisa Spitzel. And I will see it on both views. Here you see the change of the view. In the app.js you see which partial view belongs to which controller. Here you see the service JS. That's the JavaScript that communicates with the backend. And here you add the dependency of ng resource. Now we, we make a factory the EMPS factory with a function We start the backend so that we copy the URL and paste it in our resource. And we make a method, find all. We say the method type is get. And we expect the array to come back. Now we go to the controller. It lays between the service and the partial view. And here we have to say we want to use amps, that's the factory in the service JS. And now we can make a variable all amps and that one's amps dot find all. You have to do braces here. You don't have to do them in the service JS, but don't forget them in the controller. 
So let's move on to the partial theory. And we do a simple table for the name of the employee and for his job. So for the data, we make a table row and then we can use ng-repeat, it's like a for each and we say amp, a uh, variable name, in all amps and that all amps is from the controller, the variable. So, oh, and now we can access the variable with this double brackets. And we say dot ename a field of one amp. So and now we run it again and we see all the amps with their job. So now we want to add a click event. For this we can use the ng click. And we call the method show details. And now we have to write the method in the controller. I forgot the brackets, don't forget these. You don't have to write them in the controller either but you have to write it in the partial view. And we say we get the parameter, the current clicked amp. And we do a new variable selected amp. Now we can print the values of the selected amp. We do this in an unordered list. And we'll just display some details. And here you see you can access the variable like we did before with the double brackets. And you also can write something in the fields additionally to the brackets. So we say the upper one is the sal and then comes the com. And if we now save, we see there is a list and if we click on an amp, it will change the field values. But now we don't want that if no amp is selected that the uh, list is shown. So we do an ngif. And as we see, if nothing is clicked, the list isn't shown. And now we want the same for the com. That means we need an ngf. The selected amp.com is not null. The field shall be shown. And we see it works. So now we want to print the name of the depth in which the amp goes. So that means we need a function which returns the, the selected depth. So we need a new factory.
and now we want to add a parameter in the URL so it looks a little different to the upper method. The get depth is the function name and we say the input parameter is id. So now we copy the URL and change the last to depth and slash the parameter which we'll call depth now. So in this bracket now we can Given the parameter, we say the depth node should be replaced by the ID. So now we make a variable selected depth. And we'll call the function. with the input parameter from amp.depna. Here you have to declare the factory like we did with the amps factory. So now let's go to our partial view again and add a list item. And here we'll show the name of the selected depth. And if you now save, you see the depth is shown. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.